All right, so we are now currently at round four. Unfortunately enough, we didn't get to see which Pokemon got chosen, but it is going to be Pier versus Explain a lot. Let's have a champion time. Now, Pier is going to start off with the Dragapult and that Indeedee female, which we don't see a lot today in Series 7. You know, starting off with, you know, Series 5, we don't really see, well, Series 6 rather, we don't see a lot of uh, psychic. Well, not Psychic Surge, uh, in Diddy Female, rather, because mm -hmm. we usually see the Clefairy or the Among Us. But for the side, I'll explain now, it's going to be the Stakataka and the Clefairy. So we have two redirectors out in the field here, both of which do slightly different things. You know, Indeedy is known for being somewhat offensive with its expanding force boosted by Psychic Terrain. And the big thing is it, you know, it denies things like Fake Out, but... We do see the dragon or the um dragapult excuse me not dragonite the dragapult go for a dragon dance in front of a stack attack of clefairy which you know to me signals follow me trick room so guess you're going to be the slowest thing in trick room anyways but a bit of a peculiar decision i think you know in my opinion right i mean if, if that is the case you know i think dragapult no not uh i think pier did actually see that coming uh, i don't think that uh pier Pier know or at least knew that there's going to be a trick room because like if it did if he saw that coming then why then would he go in for a drag dragon dance but right now still no, explain a lot rather i'm sorry explain a lot is gonna go in for the dynamax takataka and let's see what's gonna be the answer for pier here no dynamax coming yeah, up on the following Indeed. side mm -mm. follow me does come out though this could could potentially prove, you know, kind of fatal. Indeed, he should go down here to the double up. Actually, Moonblast might not KO. Oh. Clefairy is not known for its offensive prowess. The real question is, what is Dragon Ball going for here? Is it going for a Dragon Dart? Is it going for a Phantom Force? Phantom Force would actually be a pretty big problem for Explain a Lot. And Indeed, he does survive. Oh, Dragon Dart is going to do two into the stock attack, but not going to do a lot due to redirection because Clefairy is a fairy type Pokemon. Starting on, wait, where did it start? Yeah, it started with the uh, X and Y because it's got mm, it reintroduced yeah. an X and Y. Wow, I, I, I almost completely forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of those Pokemon that got that got changed along with you know Azumarill and things. Um, I also don't think I've yeah. ever seen a, a plus one Dragon Darts on a single target do such negligible damage. I really. I don't. I just Dragapult in Trick Room is just. It honestly feels kind of gross to watch. Um, Indeed, it does go down here. Unfortunately, it did take two turns of explaining the last Dynamax, and I think, you know, Trick Room has three more turns. Well, two more after this one, but you're, he's not really being, been able to make a huge, huge, you know, lead off of his Trick Room because of the redirection from from the the Indeed female. Moonblast is going to come out. This should do a decent chunk into Dragapult, but yeah, not going to KO for right now. So Dragapult will stick around. And Phantom Force does finally come out. This is this is really gross to watch, dude. Like, currently Stakataka is at plus three defense thanks to the Beast Boost and you know the 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 two Max Steel Spike. Even with the Glass Rear here, man, I don't I don't. Oh man, this is this is really gonna be hard because Stakataka could just like Max Steel Spike the Glass Rear and potentially get in the one hit KO. Um. Then Clefairy here could just, well, definitely it's not going to be able to like use a Moonblast against uh, Dragapult just because of the fact that it's currently a plus one speed, so Clefairy is going to be the faster one. But even if that's the case, mm, this is going to be hard for the side of Fear. It's definitely going to be very difficult. Having Glass Shear does make your Trick Room matchup feel a lot better. I just, I'm surprised to not see you switch in your Trick Room Pokemon to that Dragapult slot turn one. So we'll have to see mm -hmm. how this goes. If it's weakness policy last year, it it should survive this. I, I, it's helping. I think it will. It, last year's a pretty bulky Pokemon. We do see the Steel Spike come out. The problem is, even if last year's at plus two, Stack Attack is now at plus four defense, I believe, if I saw the Beast Boost correctly. Mm -hmm. It is, it is, it is. So basically it's plus two against this last year, and I don't think you're KOing it. And it's not weakness policy either. Yeah, Stack Attack is just going to eat that, that four times effective wow. move for breakfast. Oh my god. Look at that. Even with the Max Knuckle, not going to do a lot. 
you know with the help of that plus four and look at this and look at this as well right plus two dragapult attack they do nothing against the clefairy on plus four defense right now so at this point explain a lot to just like do whatever and it's still gonna do well a lot of damage you're still gonna survive last year is a it's a physical attacker right here uh we also have the dragon ball as well and using that clefairy with the helping hand is just going to make sure he's gonna deal a lot of damage knocking off both of the pokemon that is just nothing that is a waste of the dynamax the dragon ball wasn't switched out immediately from the first turn you know well, I mean, he could just like bounce off off of that the mistake of using uh, using the dragon dance, and I don't know, maybe maybe sold out for the trick room, but that wasn't the case, and now he's suffering for it. We've we've talked about this in I think almost every game now, and just how vitally important speed control is. If you're moving first, it just gives you such a huge advantage. So we are gonna see the water type Urshifu come in. I just. I don't think you're going to be able to get through this Clefairy that, at plus two defense. We do see the Moonblast come out, which is a bit of an interesting choice in my opinion. But I really, I just, going back to that Dragapult, I think you should, my, my take is you should switch it out into the Glacier turn one. Or if you do what you did, because I do like stalling out an extra sort of turn of that Dynamax potentially with the Phantom Force. Just max guard with the Glacier last turn so the second attack I can't get an extra boost and then go on the offensive when it's no longer Dynamax. I think even if it was at plus three defense, a max knuckle or a max or a max quake against a nine dynamax, non-dynamaxed, excuse me, Sakataka is still gonna do a decent chunk of damage. Ooh, that is quite bad, dude. Did you see the damage of the moon blast? It's more it than honestly, half health. It honestly and did it, a lot. It, it, coming in from a Clefairy. And coming in from a Clefairy as well, that is so bad. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, explain a lot. You know, it's just kind of, it's kind of, kind of feel bad for Pierre here, dude. Like it, it, watching it, it was. I'm not, I'm not gonna say that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a gross game for explain it all, but it's a gross game for Pierre. And you know, yeah, I, I command explain, but like that way, that's just like, just like watching a torture. I do think, I think Pierre just made one really slightly catastrophic mistake of just leaving that dragon pole in against a trick room lead um and not really mm -hmm. utilizing the because i mean if you're a glass year usually you're the slowest thing under trick room meaning you go first the only things that really under speed you are i, I think amoongus actually might be a speed tie i can't remember off the top of my head but the two things that come to mind that outspeed you under trick room are dusclops and of course that stack attack us so being in trick room actually for once is not where glass year is as happy so here we do get to see the teams. I think the problem is you don't have a great way to deny Trick Room because you most likely can't KO this, the stack attack of turn one due to the Clefairy follow me. So I think maybe this next turn, this next game, I would like to see Pierre lead the Glacier and maybe try and deter the Trick Room that way or say, hey, you know, I'm just going to start smacking into your Clefairy and get some boosts up. Maybe you just expanding force and max knuckle turn one with like last year and Didi mm -hmm. to try and just take it out and then start targeting down the stack attack before it can get really boosted. So we'll have to see. And they do make the adjustment of going in DD last year. I really like this adjustment. I think this will go much, much better for Pierre in this game too. I mean, you know, I think, I think Pierre here needs to immediately attack, like immediately attack, knowing that, mm -hmm. especially if it's going to go for, you know, uh, expanding force, that that could work. Especially, you know, you'd have to know that the fairy is definitely just going to go in for the for a follow me, and then of course Takataka is going to set up the trick room. But here we have it, Pierre. Let's have a champion time going in for the Dynamax for the Glacier. It's a really good decision coming in from Pierre here. But what comes next? That is the question. So far, it seems like Pierre has heard me through the ether <laughs> and is listening to me. I wonder <laughs> if... Oh, it's a helping hand. If this is a Steel Spike coming out, it should KO the Clefairy. But if it's not, I think maybe a potential expanding force and attack to get a boost would have done more damage. But it is the Steel Spike. Will this KO? I think it will. And it does. Clefairy gets, gets O-Code. That's a very different start to the game than last game. That's huge. 
Right, that is indeed huge. But you have to consider the fact that Takataka is still up there. Could still do the trick room. And then, even with a plus one, even with a plus one, Takataka is still there. And you have to consider as well that Peer never saw the last two Pokemon uh, explain a lot in the last game. Now that he has... Now that he has his Glacier as well up here, this is going to be a difference whether which one is bulkier or not. Just because of the fact that Glacier off Pier already has plus one on attack. Or rather, plus one on defense. And, and plus one well. on attack. Yeah, yeah, for the chilling chilling yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do like what, what um, Explain a Lot is going for here with the potential protect to try and activate the weakness policy. I do think getting Steel Spike boosts up on your side of the field to get that defense to match the rising attack of this Glacier is definitely a good idea. The problem is if Glacier just keeps max knuckling, which while it's not the strongest max move because it caps at 95 power, it is super effective to both these Pokemon, stack attack a doubly so, or I guess doubly doubly so, and it will keep raising your attack so you'll stay ahead of those defense boosts and you have a DD for, for, for redirection, so... I, Pierre's definitely made some really good adjustments. I really, really like this. This is really well played. Right. And let's see right now. Max Hill Spike off of that and Diddy. Not going to do a lot of damage. But of course, he just needs to get his defenses up just for that Glacier. But let's see. Glacier going in for the close combat right now. Into that of the Diddy. Was explaining a lot. Wasn't expecting the follow me. But, you know... Whatever works, right? But here we go. Max Steel Spike Oof. going for the Glacier. It's going to be a one-hit KO. Interesting game. Interesting turn, rather, for Pierre here. You know, that's a huge adjustment that he did. And right now, he is he is just getting the roots. He's just getting all the, the, the plants of the, of the fruits of the seeds that he actually planted on game number one. Knowing that he lost like this in game number one... He now has the opportunity to change up his things, change his strategy, and now everything's just working out pretty well for him. Yeah, I, I really love seeing players adapt like this and getting, okay, you know, game one really didn't go my way. I honestly had no momentum at all. How can I turn this around? And Pierre is turning this around big time. I mean, explain a lot is just been on the back foot since turn one. That close combat, I'm very surprised to see a close combat do such little damage to Ndidi, surprisingly bulking there bulky there they are going to see presumably its last follow me come out with another steel spike as well so urshifu known for being somewhat physically bulky is going to be at plus one we'll see what move the spectre goes for but or the grass year goes for but it is at plus two and it is still also at plus one defense as well so this you know with one ko it's starting to look a bit better but i don't know last year's still really well poised to just kind of run away with this mm, i mean you have to also consider that Ah oh, man, Sakataka is currently at plus three. Mm -hmm. Stack is... and two max health spikes. Yeah, and it just shook a berry and just ate that max quake, and now your last year's Dynamax is over. So, I think maybe a little bit of a, maybe slightly a bit of a blunder there. It depends on what Pierre has in the back. His last year did take a good chunk of damage there from Urshifu, but while he may not know it, while they might not know it yet, uh, Urshifu is choice banded, so it's just going to continually lower its defenses. So. And pretty much anything in a turn is going to be able to just Oko it. And the Water-type right. Urshifu is going to come out from Pierre's side. So, interesting dynamic here. Two Pokemon that don't really want to be in Trick Room, and two that really do, except one of them wants to be in Trick Room way more than the other. Oh, man. Let's see. Let's see. Stakataka, Urshifu. I mean, at this point, of course, when it comes to numbers, Pierre has the advantage. But... When it comes to bulkiness, here's the thing, right? Glacier right now, definitely the strongest Pokemon in the field. Uh, into the side of Pier, but with that alone, that's not going to be enough. With a plus one right now into the Urshifu, and then the plus three into the, uh, you know, plus three defense as well, to the side of Sakataka, then whatever, whatever that Pier could do would be, would be just survived by... Uh, you know, we will just be survived by explaining a lot. And just like that, he was able to take out a Shifu. Takataka could, well, it could very well 
take down either of the Pokemon, but then again, one more would be left out. I believe there is still one last turn of Trick Room, and we do see the Kartana come out here. Kartanas are typically wearing that Assault Vest so they can't protect or detect. Uh, we have seen some Focus Sash Kartana, but I imagine that might be on the Ndidi. So we do see checking the turn to Trick Room. There is one left. I think you have to go off on the offensive here. The problem is, if Kartana survives this turn, it may be able to just take these KOs. I mean, Stack Attack is really boosted up, but it doesn't really have the HP to survive these moves, especially coming off That's of true. Kartana's huge attack stat. It will go for the Body Press. This should kill the Body Press, Glacier. though. Yep, so Glacier will go down. The, the question is, will Kartana survive the turn? If it does... I think it's a wrap, and Pierre takes this one. Right, but let's see. Plus four right now into the defense, and of course, making sure that the, that the butter press is going to do a lot, and that mm. close combat is going to knock out. No, not quite enough. It has it a focus, focus sash, sash in. That's mm -hmm. huge. Make sure that it's going to be... Making sure that it's going to survive at least one. One hit. One turn, rather. But that... Oh, man. Knowing that... Knowing that Stakataka is the faster one right now, you know, it's... Oh, never mind. It the Trick, trick room, room is over. now out as well. So as Ooh, long as Now, this just KO. goes down to the matter whether Stakataka would be able to survive a hit against Kartana. Knowing that it's currently at plus four on defense, Kartana is at it plus may be one, a possibility. Though. It could be, but I don't think it gets a four times effective move. Yup. Oh, yup, yup. Close, but no That's cigar. Good. The honestly, very impressive adjustment from Pierre. I think that went much, much... I mean, obviously, since they won the, the game, it went much, much better. Still very close. I think there may have been one turn where things didn't quite go their way and they lost a little bit of momentum. Uh, being slower than mm -hmm. the stack attack in Trick Room with the last year is definitely a problem. But I think that lead of Indeedee last year works really well against Explain A Lot's team. We'll see if Explain a Lot decides to mix up his lead now that he did, unfortunately, drop a game with it. I'm trying to think of what else they could go for. Something like Regilecki Spectre could actually throw off the Ndidi uh, Glacier lead pretty hard. But, you know, Ndidi is immune to Ghost um, because it is part normal type. And Spectre doesn't, or Glacier right. doesn't really care about having his speed lower, to be honest with you. So it's going to be interesting. I think the leads of this game three are really going to determine who wins. Will they both stay the same? I expect Pierre's to stay the same. It's it's more down to explain a lot to make the adjustment this time since they just came off of a loss. Hmm. I mean, I, I actually think that for the 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 leads that explain a lot has done is working out pretty well for him. But if he's going to change mm -hmm. it, then so be it. It's actually well, I I I, I don't know it would work, but Pierre here. He would need to. He would need to 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 just like stay with with what he has, what he already has. Um, I actually like what he did earlier. That he was just stalling out the trick room before actually sending out that Kartana, making yeah, sure that's that was gonna very, be the faster very one nice. and mm -hmm. going to do the going to do the uh, final blow. But let's see what's going to happen in our game number three. Let's have a champion time. This time, Peter brings out Ndidi and the Glacier, same leads as the last game. And Spectre and Clefairy comes out for Explain a Lot. So this is what I was talking about. I think this, this is something that people don't necessarily mention. Pierre is almost kind of conditioned at this point to have to beat that Stack Attacka and um, the Stack Attacka and <clears throat> Clefairy you know, redirection combo coming out from Explain a Lot. So they have to lead against that and you can use that as you know to your advantage and say okay i know that you have you lost to me pretty handily in game one and game two was very very close if one turn went slightly differently i would have won that so you are going to continue to lead to beat that i'm going to lead something totally different and just completely disable your game plan as last year becomes a very very big horse last year be the chunky boy right now. Unless he was going to be the answer back here from the side of explain a lot. It's not going to be a Dynamax, but rather... Oh, man. I, I, actually, I actually wonder what yeah, explain a lot is going to do here. It's going for Nasty, nasty plot, plot, however. Oh, Interesting wow. play. Something That's greedy. In that. 
We'll see who who yeah, last year to protect, two, protect. Yeah, plus two, and it, it did go for the Clefairy. That actually works out unbelievably well. You now still have Clefairy around for another turn. You can soak up one more turn of Dynamax, and you have a plus two Spectre. This should be able to Oko and Didi, and we know the Focus Sash is on that Kartana. So Indeedy is not going to be able to survive, presumably, a Max Strike or a Max Quake at plus two from a Life Orb Spectre. I mean, honestly, I don't think I would have been able to make that that read and say, okay, I know you're going to follow me and still spike my Clefairy because you're expecting redirection. So I'm just going to Nasty Plot in front of you, but it pays off big time for Explain a lot. Honestly, great read. And it actually did. And it actually did as well. And look at this right now. It's going to go in for the Dynamax plus two Life Orb. This is gonna be nuts. It's essentially like plus mm. three right now, with the help of the life orb. But it's, yeah, it's close. You know, that is very close. Man, knowing knowing you know predicting your opponent. Well, pr yeah, making sure that your opponent predicts you going for a redirection is a very big brain play. But <laughs> even with that, follow me as you mentioned. It's not going to be able to survive Spectre's attack. Now Max Quake right now going to boost up his special defense. And one hit KOing this Indeedy is gonna do a lot, and it's gonna be a big deal for Peer. That's gonna be very difficult for Peer to deal with. I mean, I I want to say right now Spectre wins that is plus three with Life Orb. I mean that's just crazy. I don't think Spectre or Last Year, excuse me, can KO and return. And since it's going for Steel Spikes over and over again, it, it that leads me to believe. Well, we know we did see the Quake. I'm surprised to not see a Quake come out to try and boost his special defense to live a turn. Of course, Spectre does have, or last year, excuse me, getting my horses confused. There's too many of them. <laughs> last year does have one last turn of Dynamax where Spectre has two and is at plus three. Presumably the fastest thing in the game right now. And with Reggie Leckie on your side as well to slow things down, I mean, I think Spectre is just going to completely run away with this game and just Oko everything that's left. Right. Huh. I actually don't see how. Well, currently. Currently, none of the not the field, uh, none of it is on the field of any of these players right now. They're currently on the neutral grounds, which is really interesting. Just like one one hit, one turn could actually turn the tides around to either of these players. We do see a potential max guard coming from explain a lot to try and not get that speed drop, and then maybe go for its own your own electro web on your side, so that way you can. Presumably kill the Regilecki before it moves on the next turn. We'll see what this what he decides to lock into here. But I think at this point, I mean, Spectre has decent special bulk. It does go for the max guard, so it won't get its speed lowered. I do like this play. I think this is very smart. But we didn't see the Electro Web come out from his own Regilecki. I believe we saw the Volt Switch. So we'll see how this plays out. It depends on what the Glacier targets this turn. Hmm, we're very lucky now going in for the Volt Switch. Let's see which Pokemon is going to be switched out for Reggie Lucky. Looking in for the Clefairy, making sure that this Grim Knight Pokemon, this Grim Grim Horse, is going to be able to survive with the help of that Friend Guard. Max Quake is now out going to be able to do a lot of damage against the Clefairy and you know what's really interesting here is that he's just going in for that Max Quake right targeting the Roger Eleki and thinking that he's gonna go in for a plus well going in for a knockout on that uh Roger Eleki rather right but you have to consider as well that currently currently Glassphere is at plus two special defense with with Spectre right now still doesn't have a lot it only has like plus plus three right but with a plus mm, two plus the, that essentially just yeah plus three that essentially just removes all the damage coming in from that plus stages well at, well uh, for the, with the exception of the life orb and plus one mm -hmm. yeah it's last year is poised to potentially survive a hit here but i really like this play what explain a lot is doing here is saying okay I'm not going to let you KO my Clefairy this turn. I need to get rid of this Regilecki so I can safely follow me and not get killed or not get you know fainted from the, either an Electro Web or a Volt Switch or Thunderbolt or something. Now that Regilecki's gone from the field, you do have presumably speed control 
um, coming in from any event minus one coming from anything in the back and you can just follow me or even helping hand and then say shadow ball the glass year i think plus one life orb helping hand it, it will do at least a ton of damage to glass year if not oko even at plus two right but let's see of course no more dynamax is on the field peer currently on his last two pokemon Spectre, however, and Clefairy down to lower than half health. Let's see whether or not Carton is going to be able to survive at least a hit from at least a hit from this Spectre. It will survive due to that focus there. sash, but I believe a plus three shadow ball is going to bring that down right to that, that focus sash amount. And we do know that Regilecki is in the back with no speed drops on it. So you can safely just either Electroweb or honestly just Thunderbolt to make sure you don't miss and just KO the uh, Glacier, the uh, Kartana this next turn, because you get a free switch in now, and then you have a Choice Band or Urshifu in the back that can just spam close combat, or even Wicked Blow at this point because of the defense boost coming out from that Max Steel Spike, and just, I think, walk away with this game. It's going to be very difficult for Beer to pull this one in. Wow, look at that. Like, Chilling Nate currently putting Glacier at plus two attack. And you also have to consider the fact that it's currently at plus two special defense as well. Mm -hmm. Now, Reggie Lecky, Lecky definitely won't be able to do a lot with this Spectre here. Uh, with, yeah, with this uh, Glass here, rather. But I guess what Reggie Lecky could do here is go in for an Electro Web, knocking down that Kartana, and lowering the speed of this Glass here. And then, you know, just let, just let Urshifu go loose. Definitely a possibility. I do like the plan to Wicked Blow the Glass Shear since it's at plus two defense as opposed to close combating it. So you bypass those. And we do see Electro would come out. If um, if it missed the Kartana there, that would have been absolutely disastrous for explaining a lot. So a little right. bit of a risky move there. Although you definitely want to... But it pays off. It does pay off, but a little bit of a risky move there. It depends on how much this Wicked Blow does. But it should... Okay, so it's, it's definitely not going to survive another one. I think at this point, even with the boost, I think Regilecki can take enough damage off of this this last year. It does have Transistor, mm -hmm. so it boosts those Electro-type moves by 1.5 times. We'll have to see. Volt Switch does have you know less base power than you'd like, so this actually could be pretty close. If Spectre lives this turn, it, it will walk away with this game. Right, this is the last turn for both of these players right now. Minus one into that oh, glass tier. If he's going to be able to survive oh this, and that's God. it. And high that horsepower, that's it. so risky. Jeez. That is it, bro. Oh my Post gosh. Three on attack. For three on attack. He was able to survive that even with a minus one on defense. He was a minus one defense, and not, well, minus, yeah, minus one defense, and plus one only with a plus one special defense only with a plus one defense he was able to survive that ball switch and that is all he needed he just needs that one drop of health from that hit and basically wipe off that rushet like he you know think about it right if he actually got in a critical hit or uh if he got in a critical hit or a high damage roll then that would have that would have turned out very differently it would have i think I just, wow, I, I'm i very surprised to see a high horsepower come out, honestly. I think at that point, a plus three attack, anything from last year is going to KO. So I think you just go for close right. combat since it can't miss. If, if that high horsepower misses, then that's definitely a throw there from Pierre. But really, really good adaptations. I think game three was definitely a bit closer than two. Pierre definitely felt like they had game two under wraps. But game three, I real I do like explaining lots adaptation, and their their play turn one was honestly phenomenal. I mean, just protect nasty plot in front of a DD last year. Like I, I wouldn't have thought to do that, but it worked out really well. It just I think that one turn where Spectrier wasn't faster than the Kartana was where things started to go downhill for explaining life right. in that game. That not you know getting that Electroweb onto the Spectre and being at minus one speed really sort of threw a wrench in explaining Lot's game plan. But I do think they played the end game to the best of their ability um, and, and, and well played in GG to both players. Cause that was, that game three was honestly, honestly great from both ends. Great stuff. And that is it for our round.
explain a lot and man here definitely gave us a really good time and we'll be right back for more again this is fee electric tower i'm your caster i'm jj and with me is the one and only the host of them all feeper we'll be right back